course, with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording... The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one of the happy happy people have to say. Weedies, oh, weedies, and do, 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 and okay. Okay. Hi there. Hi, Don. This is the Lone Ranger speaking. Out here in the West, we have a couple of champions who are really doing okay. Champion Bob Maynard. He can grab a thousand-pound steer by the horns and toss it to the ground like it was a three-day-old calf. And bronc-busting champ Bob Burroughs, the way he can stick on a mean, side-winding bronc, you'd think he was glued to the saddle. They're both great rodeo champions and both eat Wheaties. Have been ever since they were youngsters. That's a good example to follow. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doing With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, rode the trail southward from Pecos. The masked man had carefully disguised his features to resemble a cowpoke, though he still wore his mask. It was late afternoon when they were approaching the small town of Stockton. You send note to Sheriff tonight, maybe? Yes, the sooner the better. His message to our friend the marshal in Pecos, the Stockton Sheriff, that the whole territory was terrorized by an outlaw band. He and his men haven't been able to track them down. Well, that's not good. You think maybe if we Look, go Tonto, to the... down there in the valley. Outlaws, hold up stage. Yes, draw your guns. Come on, Silver. Get off the top. Three of them, Tonto. Use your guns. Them fierce. Them ride away from stage. Ride the hills. You keep on to the stage, Tonto. I'm going after them. Ah. Come on, Silver. Leaving Tonto's side, the Lone Ranger turned off and headed after the retreating outlaws, one of whom was riding a short distance behind the other two. <laughs> In spite of the bullets which whined too close for comfort, the masked man holstered his guns and continued to follow the fleeing man before him. His gun's empty now. Faster, Silver! Faster! The mighty Silver gradually closed the gap between the Lone Ranger and the outlaw, who from time to time glanced back toward the great white stallion and the masked man fearfully as he seemed to urge his own horse onward. Then he did a surprising thing. A look of puzzlement came over the Lone Ranger's face as he, too, reined Silver to a halt. Oh, Silver, oh, you just silly big fella. Don't move, you. Really, I, I have no intention of making any move that might cause you to use one of those ominous-looking guns, my friend. Take that handkerchief from your face. Of course. I don't suppose I'm in a position to demand that you remove your mask. <laughs> ah. Hmm... Your face is familiar, and If yet you've I... ever been to Arizona, you're certain to have seen handbills of me. I'm known there as Smooth Larry. Yes, of course. Smooth Larry, the most notorious outlaw in Arizona. Thank you. It's no compliment. Your presence here explains a great deal. <laughs> I know you're the Lone Ranger. I know why you were coming here. Well? I planned this, mister. Planned it? That's right. Rather ingenious of me, don't you think? I could gun you down right now if I wanted to. But you wouldn't. And if you did, my men who are among the boulders practically surrounding us would fill you with lead. Close in, men. You 
see? Yes, I do see. <laughs> that stage holdup was put on for your benefit. I rode out there with two of the men. The rest stayed hidden here. I knew you'd follow me into the trap. You sure are smart of him, Larry. You fell right in with the plan. You won't be needing those guns, mister, so just drop them to the ground, if you don't mind. Drop them. I'll take care of them for you. Oh, these are very fine guns, my friend. Just about the finest I've ever seen. Is it? Now we'll take you with us to our camp. All right. <laughs> now, I notice you're very complacent about the whole thing. But if you're thinking that your Indian companion will get the sheriff and trail us, you're mistaken. You see, he also has been taken into custody. Otto? But he went after the stagecoach. Of course. But that stagecoach belongs to us. <laughs> All right, men. Let's get back to our camp with our prize captive. Get going. All right. Come on, Silver. Get up there. That night, the sheriff in Stockton had an unexpected visitor. Howdy, Sheriff. What? Well, well, Marshal Lynn from Pecos. How are you? <laughs> what brought you here? Well, after the mass man and the Indians set out for Stockton, I got to thinking I'd like to come down here to help them and you round up that outlaw gang you sent me word about, eh? Well, I reckon I don't savvy what you're talking about, Marshal. What's that about a masked man and an Indian? Yeah, the man with the silver bullets, a lone ranger. You mean to say they didn't ride in here this afternoon? Maybe they did, but I haven't seen anything of them. But they were coming straight to your office with a note from me. They left Pecos just a few hours before I did. Well, funny they haven't come here, then. Yeah, yeah, it is funny, Hank. And let's go over to the cafe and find out if anyone's seen anything of them. All right, let's go. A short time later, the marshal from Pecos and Hank, the sheriff of Stockton, sat at a corner table in the cafe, talking in confidential tones. You didn't find out anything, eh, Hank? No. Say, <laughs> who's that smooth-looking hombre? A gambler named Larry. Has he been wearing them guns before tonight, do you remember? Mm, I didn't notice, tell the truth. You would have noticed if he had been wearing them. I'd know those guns anyway. Now see here, Marshal. Guns like that can be had by anybody who's got the money to buy them, I reckon. Well, that's where you're wrong. Those are special guns. There's no others like them in the territory. What are you getting at? I'd be willing to swear those are the Lone Ranger special gun sheriff. Hey, anybody seen the express agent around? Well, you were here a while ago. Yeah, he just went back to the office. Thanks very much. I'll go over and see if he's there. Yeah. All right, come on, Hank. You and me's going to tag along. Maybe if we keep our eyes and ears open, we can find out something. Right, come on. The marshal and the Stockton sheriff followed Larry to the express office. After Larry had entered the lighted office, they moved around to the side window, which was partly open. If we move a little closer, we can hear what they're saying. Come on. Now, this will do. Now, listen. I'm shipping the gold on the afternoon stage tomorrow to my bank in Pecos. Uh-huh. Stage leaves at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Well, I'll have the gold here in the morning. How big is the shipment? 10,000 in gold. <laughs> That's what I've won from the boys here in the past <laughs> month. Got to hand it to you, Larry. You sure can play cards. <laughs> and get your gold here plenty early for me to fix the papers. All right. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. Yeah, we heard enough, Hank. Come on. We'll go back to the cafe. Well, there's nothing wrong about shipping gold by express, far as I can see, Marshal. That's right, there isn't. But I haven't forgotten about those guns that fellow Larry is carrying. When we get back to the cafe, we'll make a few plans. It was after midnight when Larry, unobserved by anyone, slipped out of town and headed for the outlaw camp. Meantime, in a cabin at the camp, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, bound hand and foot, lay on cots waiting for what might happen. The Lone Ranger still wore a disguise under his mask, which he was sure Larry would be curious enough to remove. Finally, they heard Larry rein to a halt outside. Here comes smooth Larry now, Tonto. He's been gone since they brought us here. Uh, what do you think he'd plan to do? We'll find out soon enough. Where? Well. Still with us, I see. Not by choice. You can bet on that. <laughs> I'm sorry to make you so uncomfortable, 
But because of your reputation, I couldn't take any chances, my friends. Get to the point. What are you planning to do? I'm shipping $10,000 on the express stage tomorrow. The express company takes responsibility for its delivery. Well? Very simple, my friend. Three of my men will ride the boot of the stagecoach we own. Go on. The others will follow at some distance on horseback. Inside the coach, I'll sit with you and the Indian. Both bound, of course. We'll ride the incoming trail. I get it. The regular stage will think they're meeting the incoming express stage. Right. <laughs> they won't expect anything until we're about to pass them. Then we'll take over and get back my gold shipment. I'll put in a claim to the express company to pay off the loss of an indignant customer. Quite a clever plan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and as for you two, I'm sorry to say I'll be forced to kill you both with your own gun. Then the express stage will be sent back to town, carrying the news of the holdup and the bodies of an Indian and the Lone Ranger. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When boys line up to run a race, galloping Gordon sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you, once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked. Shaped like little round O's and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowl full, add fresh milk and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Go power, you'll get it from Cheerios. Try it and folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Smooth Larry left the cabin and the Lone Ranger and Toto discussed the situation. We're in a tight place, Toto. I've been trying to think of a way out, but so far... Toto, did you hear that? Ah, window open, me hear Winnie. It sounds like silver. It is silver. He broke his tie line and came here where he last saw me. Must get to that window. Gotta wriggle over to the window somehow. Good thing and leave lighted candle. Yes. I hope I can get my back against the wall and slide up in front of the window. I did it. Silver. Here, silver. The cord, silver. Loosen the cords. Him putting head inside. Him nuzzling cords on hand. Come on, big fella, loosen them. Toto, he's doing it. Easy, Silver. Try once more. There. He did it. Good boy. That good. Hardy keep us happy. I'll untie my feet. Come on, untie you, Toto. <laughs> there. I'll get you free. And what we do, keep us happy? We'll double up on Silver and make a run for it. They won't be expecting an escape. There, that does it. Your hands are free. Now, let me get cords off feet. There. There's a white guy over near the cabin. Somebody coming. Go away, Silver. Go away. I'll loop the cords loosely on our wrists and lie on the cot. I'll tie our feet again. Lie down, Tonto. Put your hands behind you. Ah, he must have known his tie line. Them not come inside now, but Tonto come soon with food. He won't suspect anything. They're taking Silver back to the corral. Cords. Loop loose on our hands. Maybe we jump, Papa. We'll come with food, Kimasabi. No, I thought of a plan. We'll stay and go through with Larry's arrangements. He'll get a big surprise tomorrow. It was almost noon of the following day when Smooth Larry returned from Stockton after making arrangements for the gold shipment. He and two of his men entered the cabin where the Lone Ranger and Toto were waiting. Well, the time's come for us to take you for that stagecoach ride. If we weren't tied hand and foot, you'd never get us into that coach of yours. Stage is ready to leave. Oh, 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 oh. Stopping outside now, Larry. All right. 
Carry these two hombres out and put them in the coach. I'll sit between them. <laughs> oh, the town of Stockton is in for a shock when the express stage returns, carrying the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend, both dead. <laughs> Smooth Larry sat between the Lone Ranger and Tonto inside the coach. Thinking they were both tightly bound, Larry took no precautions. The masked man counted on this and glanced now and then at his own guns, which rested in the outlaw's holsters. For some time, they rode in silence. Then Smooth Larry spoke. Look, coming around the bend up ahead, the express stage. <laughs> ah, this will be it, and they don't suspect a thing. As Smooth Larry talked... The Lone Ranger and Tonto quietly eased their hands from the loosened cords without the outlaw suspecting. Then the Lone Ranger gave the signal. Now, Tonto, make a gun. Hey, what moves you? Yes. Holding both guns on you. Tonto, I'll keep him covered while you untie our feet. Uh, there, you loose. Now, my feet loose too. Take the cords and tie Larry securely. Uh, me tie him plenty good. This is a bit embarrassing to me for the moment. You think your men might rescue you? Forget it. Use his handkerchief to gag him, fellow. Uh, there. He's tying. Now me gag him. Wait. That isn't necessary. I won't... Uh, now him not call out. Oh, 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 Hey, something's wrong. They're loose. The Indians got us covered. Marshal, look, a mask down. Hold your fire, Hank. That's the masked man I told you about. Come on. Hold everything, guards. This masked man's a friend of mine. Well, howdy, mister. It's sure a surprise to see you and Tonto here. Howdy, Marshal. It's a surprise to see you, too. We didn't expect you to be in the express coach. Well, I got suspicious when I saw a certain hombre in town wearing guns like yours. And when he shipped gold... Good figuring. He... The rest of the outlaw gang are back over the hill. Waiting for the signal shots before they move in. We have a posse back around the bend following us. Good. We'll have to work fast to catch the others. All right, let's get busy. Smooth Larry and the two outlaws were hurriedly put into the express stage. The lawman and one express guard took places in the outlaw's coach. The other guard climbed to the boot. After he and Tonto also took their places in the coach, the Lone Ranger leaned out and called to the driver of the express stage. All right, driver. Turn around and start back to Stockton with the prisoners as soon as we fire some shots into the air. Right. Use your guns, men. Make it sound like a short battle. Right, I'll get going with that express stage. What'll happen now? We'll stay inside this coach. The outlaws on horseback will come riding in thinking the hole up was successful. Sure is a smart plan. My deputy will soon come riding along with the posse, too. He can help us get the whole gang. Look, Kimasabi, here come outlaws now. Yes. I see they're bringing Silver and Scott with them. Keep out of sight until they get close to the stage. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Larry. Since you sent the body to the engine and the masked man in the express coach... Hey! Why you... Look at that driver on the boot. He's not one of our men. Gun him down! Don't move, any of you. The mask can't break. There's the Indian. Yeah, but where's Larry? Oh, there's a couple of lawmen. There's ten of us. Six of them. I reckon we can still handle you, Coyote. Sure we can. That's right. Use your gun. Don't let them get away with this. Hold it. Here comes the posse. Look, about ten or twelve more coming to help the law. Let's get out of here pronto. Fight your way. <laughs> Outlaws tried to fight their way out of the trap, but they became panic-stricken as the bullets flew thick and fast. With the Lone Ranger and his friends before them, and the posse closing in behind them, they were hopelessly beaten, and one after the other, they threw down their guns. Well, we got them all, thanks to your quick thinking, my friend. Marshal, the credit really should go to Silver. He's the one who helped us turn the tables on Smooth Larry. Then you, big fella, huh? <laughs> How could a horse do anything to help, mister? Now, you see, I've spent a great deal of time and patience training Silver. He loosened the cords that bound me when I was a captive in the outlaw's camp. Oh, yeah. Silver, him a plenty smart horse. Marshal, now that things are under control, Todd and I are heading further south. 
We'll see you again sometime in Pecos. I'll be mighty glad to see you, my friend. The law sure owes you a lot for what you've done to keep varmints like these from blocking progress here in the West. Goodbye and good luck to you. Thanks. Adios. 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 He sure is a man of action, that fella. Yeah. Who is he, Sheriff? He's an hombre the marshal sent over from Pecos to help round up the outlaws in this territory. <laughs> you can plainly see that he helped do it, too. Yep, he sure did. He's the only mask hombre I ever heard of who's on the side of the law. He's the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.